Hello and welcome back. We're talking about hormones and in the last video it was about progesterone and now we're going to hit estrogen and we're actually doing three videos on estrogen because it's so important. Part one, estrogen, as sexy and safe as it gets. So here's a cartoon and the guy is sitting on the psychiatrist's couch and the psychiatrist says, when did you first become aware of this imagined plot to get you? So it's not your imagination. Something really has changed. And as you know, I've told you with this same chart that Hormones start declining rapidly at around age 40, and you can see them all declining significantly, starting close to age 35, but during 40 to 50, they are really plummeting, and then they just kind of flatline after that. And we're living a lot longer these days. We're actually outliving our hormones. So what's a woman to do? Wait, isn't hormone replacement therapy bad for you? No, and I'm going to prove it to you. So you got to know a little bit about some history. And so let's say prior to 2002, doctors prescribed tons and tons of medication called Primarin or Primpro. You've probably heard about it. And here's a little joke. Here's your bottle of Primarin, urine from pregnant horses in a handy pill form. You take them home and swallow them. So Primarin, as you probably know and, and have heard, comes from pregnant horses urine. And it contains more than 17 different estrogens. One of them is close to the estrogen estradiol that we make in our own bodies. Primpro is Primarin plus a progestin called medroxyprogesterone. Now that's the synthetic progestin that I have really emphasized that we want to stay clear from. Neither of these are really bioidentical, but the estrogen that is close to human estrogen in Primarin that is part of the group of uh, estrogens from horse's urine is pretty close, not bioidentical. Now, in 2002, the Women's Health Initiative, which was being uh, directed by Dr. Russo, uh, halted the study right away brought about a big conference with press, with the press there, not telling anyone what was on his mind except for the researchers that hormone replacement therapy caused breast cancer, heart disease, and dementia. This was his blanket statement. And he stated to the press that day that he intended to let the world know about it. Well, the press loved that and they made sure that indeed the world knew about it. And literally overnight, women threw out their hormones. Who wants breast cancer, heart disease, and dementia? They'd rather have hot flashes and a miserable life than find themselves getting at high risk of that for taking hormone replacement therapy. Doctors were confused and patients were confused and pharm the pharmaceutical industry was working really hard to try to figure out how to preserve their bottom line. There was a lot of mass hysteria and confusion. Millions of women and their relationships at that point suffered tremendously. And we now know that more than 50,000 women have since died from heart disease because of giving up their hormone replacement. And it caused countless, countless number of increased cases of diabetes and osteoporosis and obesity, even cancer. So what ended up happening is that we were actually deceived in 2002 because Dr. Russo 
was soon found and later faulted for coming out with this information before he had the facts. So it's been a very slow recovery for us. That was 15 years ago. And the Women's Health Initiative has been reassessed over and over again. And the true findings have come out. And efforts to explain these findings have been taking place over the last 15 years. So I'm one of them. I'm one of the doctors who from the very beginning knew that there was a problem with what came out in 2002. And I have tried very hard with many other doctors to get that word out. So I have done conferences, I've circled my practice around it. I treated women with full comprehensive care with bioidentical hormones. I even had a specialty mentorship for nurse practitioners to learn the truth. Christine Northrup, if you haven't heard about her, wonderful, wonderful ob gyne doctor who has written many books. Of course, Suzanne Summers. She has been great for us. She's not a physician, but she really has done tons of research and has had a lot of doctors help her get the word out. Rebecca Booth in her book, The Venus Week, Dr. Cy Bell, I love this gentleman. He was director of the Complicated Menopause Program in a, in a Harvard Associated uh, Medical School, Massachusetts Medical School. And he wrote The Estrogen Window. That came out about a year ago. Very good book and wonderful physician. Joseph Mercola, yes, the man your doctor doesn't want you to listen to. Actually, anti-aging physicians love you to listen to Joseph Mercola. And Jim Paoletti, an amazing researcher pharmacist who has really been a major contributor to testing hormones accurately with top because of people converting over to topical hormones. He's the founder of ZRT Laboratories, one of the most advanced hormone laboratories in probably the world, but definitely in the United States. And he teaches doctors and pharmacists and other providers how to use, how to, how to balance hormones and also how to test hormones. And then many of my mentors, the American Academy of Anti-Aging and the IFM, which is the Institute for Functional Medicine. These are just some of the professor slash physicians that have dedicated their lives to their careers, to uh, getting the word out about bioidentical hormones and the truth. So it's really led me down an amazing path too. And I landed a wonderful opportunity to participate in authoring a book with Brian Tracy. And really what that was about is in order to be a part of the book, you had to give away your $10,000 secret. And my secret was you can balance your own hormones by yourself with bioidentical hormones that are available to you over the counter. All right, so let's look at some proof. You ready? Okay. The Women's Health Initiative trial, 10 years later, an overview. Hormone therapy for early menopausal women is safe and effective. And women without a uterus have a reduced risk of breast cancer in all age groups if they take estrogen. Now, what I want to tell you about this is it says without a uterus. Well, why? It says without a uterus because they can't say for those women who took the pr prim pro, they had a decreased risk of breast cancer because they didn't. Because the medroxyprogesterone is the culprit, not the estrogen. Uh, here, uh, transdermal, that means topically the route, transdermal route of estrogens and natural progesterone offer significant benefits and added safety transdermally. And transdermal estrogen and progesterone could reduce and even stop 
the risk of blood clots, stroke, and breast disease, breast cancer, excuse me. Here's one very important journal of steroid biochemistry and molecular biology. When hormone therapy is started in women near menopause and continued long-term, hormone replacement therapy decreases coronary heart disease and overall mortality. Here's uh, post-grad med 2009 evidence supported the efficacy of bioidentical hormone therapy and it lowered the risk of breast cancer and cardiovascular disease. Hmm. Breast cancer risk is higher with synthetic hormone replacement therapy than with bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Bioidentical progesterone has a neutral effect or beneficial effect on blood pressure. Over a thousand postmenopausal women, no association between increased risk of breast cancer and the use of topical progesterone. Progesterone inhibits the spread of breast cancer cells, and in this study, up to 90% decrease in cancer cell growth. And another study with over a thousand women. Women that were being studied that had low progesterone had five times a greater risk of premenopausal breast cancer and 10 times greater risk of death from malignant tumors compared to women who had normal progesterone levels. Hmm. So the Women's Health Initiative was really a double-edged sword because it had two groups. It had the primering group that had only the estrogen and it had the prim pro group that had the estrogen and the medroxy progesterone, which is the synthetic progestin. And it was that group that was having all of increased risk of breast cancer, stroke, heart disease, uh, blood clots. Got it? Got it? Very important. So it helped Dr. Russo coming out and stopping it suddenly was very irresponsible, but it did help women get off of PrimPro and Primarin, and it helped spread the word of bioidentical hormones, which is great, and it pushed more doctors in that direction. But it did cause a lot of problems with women across the world, suffering needlessly, really, for 15 years, as well as their relationships. And we know about the 50,000 women who have lost their lives because of heart disease and many more cases of diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, colon cancer, cholecystitis, which is gallbladder disease, all of those because of getting off of hormone replacement therapy. So with this knowledge, and there's many, many more studies, and in our next videos, you're going to see even more. Why are so many people still keeping their heads in the sand? You're going to find out. And I'm going to show you in the next video and share with you in part two a peek into why I do this, why it's so important. And we're also going to talk about the three different types of estrogen and the balance of these three estrogens in your body. All right, so my favorite song I want to share with you. You ready? This is my favorite song. And it actually, I'm not pulling it up. So <laughs> let's see if I can find it. This is my favorite song. So if you made it to the end of this video, it's such an important video that I'm going to share it with you. Wow, I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. I feel good